Hey guys, welcome to History Facts. Today we are discussing the life of Mansa Musa, the richest human being who ever lived. Enjoy the video. For centuries, Mansa Musa has been considered by many historians and economists as the richest man to ever live. Reigning over an empire that spanned about nine present-day African countries, Mansa Musa used the empire's vast wealth and resources to elevate Mali Empire to its peak in the early 14th century. There was certainly more to this ruler than the famed stories of his vast wealth and generosity. Therefore, who really was Mansa Musa? And how did he become such a famous and wealthy African monarch? History remembers him as the 10th ruler of Mali. Before becoming a Mansa king in 1312, Musa was Emperor Abu Bakr II's deputy. As tradition dictated, the Emperor of Mali often appointed a deputy to rule in their stead whenever they were on a foreign trip. On one such occasion, Emperor Abu Bakr II gathered a team of officials and the best seamen all throughout the empire. Their destination was to get to the edges of the Atlantic Ocean. Unfortunately, neither the emperor nor his captains returned. Subsequently, Musa was crowned king of Mali, the 10th Mansa of Mali. Today, Mansa Musa continues to be venerated by Africans and even Europeans alike as one of the greatest and wealthiest rulers of all time. Mansa Musa had different titles and adulation. Mansa Musa's 25-year reign from 1312 to 1337 saw him acquire several titles and veneration from his subjects. For starters, the name Mansa translates into King of Kings or Emperor. And the Musa refers to Moses in the biblical context. Other titles that Mansa Musa had were Lord of Mines of Wangara, Futajalan, Lion of Mali, Amir of Mel, Conqueror of Ganada, and Kankin Musa. Prior to his ascension to the throne, he was known as Musa Keda or Kanku Musa or Kankin Musa. Kanku Musa in Mali Empire meant Musa whose mother was Kanku. His empire was the second largest in the world at the time. The Mali Empire that Mansa Musa reigned over was considered the second largest in the world at the time. No other empire, except the Mongol Empire, could boast of such immense land mass. It is estimated that the empire stretched from the coast of the Atlantic Ocean to the deserts in Chad. At the peak of Mansa Musa's reign, the emperor had dominions over places in present-day Mauritania, Chad, Niger, Mali, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, the Gambia, Senegal, and Guinea. Such was the sheer size and might of the Mali Empire. In order to ensure smooth administration of those places, Mansa Musa would appoint very trustworthy governors. These governors were called Farba. They were in charge of records keeping, tax collection, and general enforcement of the emperor's directives. Mansa Musa had a tradition of honoring the best performing or most admired governor with a white pair of trousers. The whiter or bigger the pair of trousers, the more favored the governor was to Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa was one of the first Muslim rulers in West Africa, perhaps Sub-Saharan Africa, to visit Mecca. As part of one of the five cardinal principles in Islam, Muslims must at least once in their lifetime journey to the holy city, Mecca, in Saudi Arabia. Mansa Musa, a devout Muslim, embarked on this journey in a manner that had never been witnessed before, perhaps will never be seen again. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage to Mecca cost an absolute fortune. On his way to Mecca, it is believed that Mansa Musa went in a caravan. His caravan, one of the longest caravans ever, comprised several tens of thousands of officials, advisors, slaves, and courtiers. All of these people wore the finest Persian-made silk at the time. 
The exact year this journey of his took place was in 1324, seven years after his coronation. His pilgrimage inadvertently caused many economies to go bust. The interesting thing about Mansa Musa's legendary pilgrimage to Mecca is that the king spent a real fortune along the way. There were about 80 to 100 camels, and atop the backs of these camels were several pounds of gold around 300 to 400 pounds of gold dust. Every place that King Musa stopped, he would hand out vast amounts of gold to the locals. Mansa Musa's spending was so lavish that in some places like Egypt, the local economy actually collapsed because of the influx of vast amounts of gold. Inflation in those places soared up. Historians believe that it took a couple of years for those economies to get back on track. It is also believed that Mansa Musa, in an attempt to fix the situation, opted to buy back the gold that he had originally dished out. By so doing, he briefly dictated the gold prices of that region, perhaps of the word in general. He built several mosques and houses in foreign lands. Due to the vast wealth and resources at his disposal, Mansa Musa could afford building mosques at all the places that he stopped during his journey to Mecca. Never had the locals in those places ever seen such generosity from one person. The idea of constructing such places of worship was to encourage future generations to go on pilgrimage to Mecca. Additionally, the emperor built houses and residential facilities that accommodated the Muslim pilgrims from all across the continent. He hoped that by providing well-established camps and worship places along the route to Mecca, pilgrims' journeys would be cheaper and less hectic. He was a heavy builder of infrastructure. The enormous wealth that the Mali Empire possessed meant that they could afford to put up magnificent buildings and social centers. Majority of these infrastructures were centered in places like Gao and Timbuktu. And at the helm of those construction projects were none other than the architects Mansa Musa brought from Spain and other places along the Mediterranean. These architects were paid very handsomely, and the buildings that they put up were nothing short of spectacular. The fact that these buildings were made of burnt sand and bricks made them even more unique and splendid. Examples of such buildings were educational institutions, palaces, mosques, markets, and a plethora of other community centers. These places helped to transform the socio-economic livelihoods of the people in the Mali Empire. Mansa Musa sits atop the list of richest people in history. Even after centuries since his death, Mansa Musa continues to hold the title of world's richest man to ever live. If you were to factor in for inflation, the total amount of wealth that this West African emperor accumulated would amount to over 400 billion US dollars. That figure is about three to four times more than the current wealth possessed by Jeff Bezos or say Microsoft founder Bill Gates. It is believed that most of Mansa Musa's wealth came from the highly rich gold and copper deposits that were littered across his kingdom. The emperor also raked in a lot of money from salt mining. At some point in time, salt was the most traded commodity across the African continent. Most of that salt came from Mansa Musa's territory. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe, and comment.